Hello, welcome to the GCSE PE presentation. I'm Mrs White, I'm one of the PE staff at Hayesfield. One of my jobs there is to lead on the GCSE course. And so throughout this presentation, I'm just going to try and explain a little bit about what the GCSE course entails, what it would involve you learning, what our expectations would be, and the experiences that you would have should you decide to pick GCSE PE as one of your options. GCSE PE is split into two components. So there's the practical side and is one of the key reasons why lots of girls do choose this course, but there's also the theory side. So the theory is split into two papers. It's worth 60% of the final mark and the practical is worth 40% of the final mark. And for that, you have to do three different sports. One sport has to be a team game. One sport has to be an individual activity. And then your third sport can come from either of the two columns. And I'll explain about that in a bit more detail a little bit later on in this presentation. So let's start with the theory. So as I said, two papers, 60% of the course. Paper one is quite scientific. It's based on the human body and movement in physical education and sport. And it looks at how the body responds to exercise, how we can train our bodies to cope better with sport, improve our fitness, and how our muscles work, how our bones move, and how we can enable our bodies to be as success successful as possible in sport. The second paper is completely different. It's called Sociocultural Influences and Wellbeing in Physical Education and Sport. And it looks at the sports psychology in sport, so how and why we learn skills. It looks at the role that sport has in society and the reasons why people do take part in sport and perhaps some of the influences and reasons why they don't. Both papers are worth 78 marks. Both papers take an hour and 15 minutes and both papers are sat at the end of year 11. They're not taken on the same day, so it means that the students can prepare for one paper first and then a few days later go in and sit the second paper. Generally, we have one member of staff that teaches paper one over the two years and a different member of the PE team teaching paper two over the two years because we feel like this gives the girls the most um, clarity as to what content comes into which paper, but also gives them a variety of learning opportunities from different approaches from different staff. The practical is worth 40% of the overall mark and it's divided into um, two key sections. So team games, so you have to choose one team game and individual activities. So you have to pick one from that list as well then you can choose your third sport from either list. In addition to this, you have to write a piece of written coursework towards the end of year 11, looking at your performance in one of your key sports, identifying strengths and weaknesses and coming up with an action plan to improve those. So let's look at the sports in a little bit more detail. So these are the lists. So you can see that there's a team list and there's an individual list. You'll need to pick one from each of those columns and then, as I said, your third one can come from either column. It's worth noting that you the sports that have asterisks, so the little stars next to them, indicate that you can't do them with other similar um, activities. So, for example, you can do doubles badminton, so taking badminton from the team column and then do singles badminton as well. Just like you can't do um, you can't do uh, single squash and then double squash, for example. The sport itself is assessed in two parts. Part one is about demonstrating the skills that you have from that sport, and then part two is you competing in a fully um, competitive performance. So for example, if you took hockey, it would have to be a full 11 aside hockey match. 
So it's worth noting that if you choose a sport, you will have to compete in it, or if it's something like dance, you will have to perform in front of an audience. You can't use a sport that you just do um, as part of your leisure and recreation time. So required skills, um, we say that you need to be competing in at least one sport outside of school. This means that you're obviously regularly practicing and training and improving your skills and therefore will give you the best opportunity of getting a strong mark. You need to be prepared to video your evidence. So some sports, for example, as you can see here, netball, but also hockey and athletics that we deliver in school. We will support you in your development in those sports and we'll video the parts that need videoing. However, if you choose something like swimming, for example, we can't do that in school. Obviously, we don't have a swimming pool. So you would be responsible for videoing your evidence, so the skills, and then you competing, so you racing in swimming at a swim meet. Um, and you need to bring that evidence for us to mark and then eventually for the moderators to watch. We would, of course, give you plenty of support in how to do this, but it's something that is worth knowing right from the start. We also would expect you to be part of the LEAP um, activities. So there's always netball, hockey, football priorities given to GCSE students so that they can come and improve their skills and we can help you collect the evidence you need. Clearly, if you're doing a lot of sport, you need to um, have a quite strong level of fitness. And also, it does really help if you have a natural interest in science, because as I said, when we were talking about theory, that paper one is quite science based. So if you enjoy science, this will go really, really well with that. Future pathways, so where can it go? Well, we run the OCR A-level PE course, so you could move it on to doing A-level PE. But then there's lots of further education and further pathways. So you could look into sports training, you could look into sports degrees, sports medicine, sport and exercise science. There's coaching, there's analysis, you could be a dietitian, a physiotherapist. And we've recently had a student go off to Cardiff um, to do medicine. So there's lots and lots of different things that taking GCSE PE could help prepare you for and act as a springboard. What other opportunities might you get if you choose GCSE PE? Well, we have quite a few links with Team Bath. For netball, for example, as you can see, this is Judy Murray running a tennis session. There's Career Days, our Gifted and Talented programme, again, links with the university. Our rich extracurricular program with priorities for our leaps and for selection for the school teams. And then we also run catch up sessions regularly after school to support the theory component of the course, as well as all of the practical opportunities. So some frequently asked questions. Do I need to do all three sports outside of school? Well, no, that's a little bit unrealistic. What we do say is we want you to do one sport outside of school, and that's kind of the thing that you're really passionate about. And then for you to get fully involved in our extracurricular programme, so our LEAP activities, be involved in the school teams and really work on those three sports that you want to put forward for your GCSE practical at the end of year 11. I'm not very good at science. Will this be the course for me? Now, it's not really whether you're good at science, it's whether you are passionate about science, because it's the interest and that passion that we're interested in and that will help you develop your knowledge for paper one for GCSE PE. So as long as you like science and you want to get better at it and you want to apply it to PE, then absolutely GCSE could still be the right choice for you. How will you be able to assess me in my sport? Well, if you're not doing a sport inside a school, so for example, if you're doing swimming, then you would need to video your training sessions and get all of those skills videoed. And then you'd need to video yourself at a swim meet and bring in those videos and we will mark them and assess them uh, for you in that way. Do I have to compete in all the sports I choose? Yes, absolutely. This is really important. 
you have to compete or you have to perform in front of a live audience for all three of your sports because that makes up a substantial proportion of your grade for that particular sport back to your PE teacher they're always happy to help but also you can contact myself or Miss McCarthy our head of PE either come and see us in the PE department or email us ask us as many questions as you need to ensure that you make the correct choice for you very many thanks for listening I'll see you soon